Good morning, everybody. This is Dee Reinhart with Illinois WorkNet, and today we're going to be doing some technical assistance training. If there are any topics that you need to have discussed, please check those in the box. Please make sure that you have checked in by your region. Um, first thing, uh, if, it, if everybody can hear me, please raise your hand with the little man at the top of the screen. And where that little man at the top of the screen is, I want you to click the down arrow. And I want you to find the applause button, because what I'm about to tell you right now, you guys are going to be over the moon about. Nocti is going away. Nocti is going away. Did, you ever, did everybody hear that? So, all right, I see the applause. All right. Um, so what I want to... What I want to do is I want to go over with you what the process is going to be now. And what we've done, uh, we're also making a couple of other changes with the, uh, the agencies and what, uh, what their training programs are. So what I want to do is right now is I want to pull over my screen so that you can see this. And I'm going to show you. Uh, what's happening with the applications for the providers. I happen to be in training right now, so can everybody see my screen? Raise your hand if you can see my screen. Okay, whoever A is, did, did whoever A is, put in the chat pod who you are because I want to know who didn't type. <laughs> um, okay, so in the training programs, <coughs> We've had some issue with uh, not getting the right answers for the drug test and <coughs> excuse me, all of those other um, the background check things. So what we've done in test is we and this will be rolling out by Tuesday. Thank you, Ann. This will be rolling out by Tuesday so that we can make the changes to the application for Wednesday. So you guys may, depending on when your orientations are, you may have to use the NACTI one more time. Um, but on the programs, when the training providers, let me make this just a little bit bigger here. On the training programs where the uh, CBOs enter their information, we have changed the answers on the questions that the Participants need to answer. Come on, test. Let's work a little faster. Sorry. It's just not going very fast, is it? Okay. Anyway, what we're what we're changing on the background checked information is um, whether or not a participant has uh, is on the sexual registry, sexual offender registry, whether or not they have a violent felony conviction or a non-violent felony conviction, as well as do they have any misdemeanors and are they, have they been on probation in the last 10 years? So those are the questions. And then do any of these re apply? Or the other question is, is someone not interested in any training programs that have a background check? So that is the option. So people can answer that. I'm not interested in a job that requires a background check. And those programs will get eliminated from their choices. So that gives them the opportunity to participate in as many or as few as they can. The other change that is happening is on the drug screening questions. Uh, they're getting. I'm sorry, here we go with the questions. We'll go down here. 
what is the minimum drug test required for participants. Uh, a drug test is not required, must, currently, must be currently drug-free and can pass a drug test, must be drug-free for at least 30 days prior to the time they submit their EPIC application, or must be willing to make changes to be able to pass a drug test. So all of the CBOs are being required to uh, update their programs, all of their programs to change these items the drug test question and the background test question. So here are the options here. Background checks, what kind of background check is required? Uh, background check is not required for this training career path, must not be a registered sex offender, must not have a violent felony conviction, must not have a nonviolent felony conviction, must not have a misdemeanor conviction within the past seven years, or must not have been on probation within the last 10 years, excluding traffic violations. So that will make some delineations available for the participants that you may need to explain a little bit to them, but what we've been able to do now is break this down so that if something's been a long time ago, those things might, need, might be able to be waived, especially with the CNA program, maybe some of the other programs. So that's the big changes on the background and the drug test questions. We need the CBOs to answer their program questions before we can update the application. We anticipate that the application will be available hopefully starting Wednesday. So you can check on that. I see Joseph typing, so I'm wondering if he's trying to ask a question here. What I also want to do is I want to show you um, on the application, or on the uh, EPIC page, this will not roll out until we get the application all ready to go. So this will roll out on Wednesday, too. But I want to show you what will be happening with this. So page one, where you do the videos, will not change. The, um, the Pro, the videos are changing to take out the reference to NACTI. I've already updated the slide one that I, over, that I speak over, and the um, FAQ questions do not have a reference to the NACTI at all. They are about the study themselves. So you will still have the three videos. We're working on getting the Spanish ones translated, so that may be a day or two before you're able to use the Spanish versions of that. So this is still the same. The, uh, the videos will be updated into the system as soon as we make the rollout with the other part of the program. Now, we've added, if you notice here, we have five steps across the top. Let me make this a little bit bigger so that you can see this a little bit better. OK, so we have step one. Now we have step two, which is skills and interests. So while we're changing, we're making some bigger changes. What we're going to be doing now with the skills and interests is the participants will be taking a short skills and interest survey. And what this is is just the career cluster inventory. It's about 5 to 25 minutes, depending on how fast the person reads. <coughs> this is a, a set of questions where they will answer like very much, like, dislike, or not sure. So it's if you're going to, uh, do you like reading in a play? Do you like singing? Do you like helping somebody if they're injured? So they will answer like very much, like, dislike, or not sure. They will need to access their Illinois WorkNet profile for this. So you will need to give them their username and password for this. We're going to have a link right here where they, very similar to how they click to log into their application, they will click on this link enter their username and password, and it will take them directly to the career cluster inventory. Uh, we're taking them directly to that one so that they don't mess around with the other three 
uh, career interest surveys that are there. We just want them to pick out what their industry, the interest industries are, so that when they go to the application, <coughs> they are able to, oh, actually when they go to the training programs, which is the next step, they'll be able to more intelligently look at the options that they want. So now on step three, training programs, we have made a change here based on some input that we got from you guys last week. So that's a um, really good suggestion, and we grabbed as close to a low-hanging fruit as we could for you. Oh, sorry, I have to log back in. Give me just a second. Okay, computer. I love technology, but there are days where I feel like I'm still on dial-up. Okay, so for step three training programs, let's, uh, oh, the plugin isn't loading very rapidly. Let's refresh this and see we can get this to come back again. Oh, goodness. Okay, I need to log in again. Sorry. So on the step three, I'll, I'll tell you about it. We were able to add the, oh, here we go. Step three training programs. Uh, now the, the customer can type in their region, select their region, so I'm going to do this. <clears throat> somebody from Chicago, or I'm going to pick uh, region two. So somebody from Rockford or Freeport, type in a zip code for me, please. So uh, region two, Rockford, Freeport surrounding area, has... Uh, a hospital and tourism program, they have a health science program, and they have a transportation program. So the programs that are available show up in a number behind here. Then they can put in whether they can pass a drug test, uh, whether they can pass a hepatitis test, whether they are uh, legally blind or not, whether they can get a driver's license, all these kind of good things. Are they listed in the sexual offender registry? Uh, we're going to be changing the, um, these options here to match the program applications. And then, um, so those will change. And then what we're going to do, what we've just added, I need Region 2 to enter a zip code for me. Somebody from Region 2 on the call? Well, I got one person from Region 2 on the call. 61101. Okay. So then I enter a zip code. And then when I look at the list, what this does for me, thank you, Lacey, is it shows me that I have a medical assistant program. We've got the career information about that program. The length is 26 weeks and it's 4.73 miles away from my zip code in my region. Then I've got hospitality career information, 4.73 miles, and CDL truck driver, 4.73 miles. So now, somebody from region four, I'm gonna redo this, somebody from region four, we were just talking on the phone the other day, um, I'm gonna click architecture and construction, can somebody from um, Quincy or one of the region fours, if somebody can type a zip code in for me, 65251. Um, okay, so I've got all of the programs marked now. And I'm just going to do this 
and I'm going to type in 62656, and so now what it's telling me is I've got this apprenticeship program, but it's 30 miles away. Is that going to be too far for your customer? Then I've got a certified nursing assistant program that's 30 miles away, or I've got a certified nursing assistant program that's 108 miles away. Because we know in Region 4, we've got the people by Springfield, and then we've also got the people over by Quincy. So this is very useful for your participants to pay attention to where these distances are. So raise your hand or clap or applaud. Is this a good thing for everybody? Joseph says yes. So if Joseph says yes, it's got to be good for everybody else. All right, April, raise your hand. All right, we've got some applause from Mara. Renee says it's good. So all right, so we listened to you, we implemented, and this will change. Um, the mileage is, um, I believe, already up, but we are going to be changing the pages so you don't want to bookmark this yet because this is currently step two, but it's becoming step three. All right, and then on step four is the application. And what we have on the application is that we are we took off the reference to, I've got to have other people proof this to make sure I got it all done right. Uh, we took off the reference to the NACTI. Yay! Right? And what I still need to do on my list today is to update the application to reflect the new questions. Um, um, let me know how many of you out in the field actually ever reference the list of the application, this, this PDF of the application, I'm sorry, the slide share of the applications. All right, does, who does use it? Anybody? Do you not use it? We, we need it there, but I'm just wondering if it needs to take up that much space. All right, Lori's typing. All right. OK, we're going to leave it there, but it's probably going to become smaller, maybe. Um, so here, where it says start your online application, this is where the customer will still click to get to their application. Now, since they have been already logged in to do their career interest survey, I haven't tested this yet to see if they have to log back in again today. Um, but hopefully it will take them straight to the application since they already logged in to do the career interest survey. All right, thank you, Mara. And then last but not least, we have step five, follow-up. Now this is going to become very important because the case worker is going to be the one who will be going over the programs that come up based on what the person's application actually says. We have changed the orientation handout that you give to the people, so you will need to print new ones. And the new one, oh, goodness, um, Lacey, if you can hear me, can you? find in the P drive the updated orientation handout. I can look for it real quickly, but if you can pull it up into Natasha's screen share so that we can show them what the new form is going to look like. We've, re we've changed it so that they can write down some more information, and so that when they are filling out their application, hopefully they get the good they get the good information into their application. And what this does is this just talks briefly about how the caseworker will review the random assignment consent form, will review the programs that they have been um, 
assigned based on the information that they fill into the application. And then it also says, uh, if you are assigned to the EPIC program, your caseworker will schedule your intake orientation appointment. So what's going to happen is the, the process still may take about three hours, but if they, when they walk out, if they are assigned to EPIC program services group, they will have their appointment. So who's happy about this? Pretty much everybody, right? All right. Okay, I'm going to pull down my screen share so that I can find the document without you guys having to watch all of this. Um, is there anything else that we need to talk about? So take a, a, a look at the checklist there to see um, if there's anything that we need to cover today. And I'm going to be quiet for a minute so that I can concentrate on trying to find this file. All right, we'll email it to you guys because I can't find it and I don't want to take any more time to, uh, to look for this. And, as, and I'm still going through my files, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, all right, is there anything else that we need to talk about today? Who's using your flyers? What else are you doing with them? If you've got a really good idea or something that you've been doing with your, okay, okay, Joseph said here, to clarify, step one is the videos. Step two is what they like or dislike, correct? Step three is the review the training programs. Yes. Step four is apply. And step five is follow-up is the same day, Joseph. So if we, uh, you will have, and that's why I want to go through the, the orientation intake form, um, because they, um, they follow up on the same day because they are not doing eligibility review. Because NACTI is being taken out, we are taking um, the only person that will be doing a review is the case worker, case manager, because the programs that are going to be recommended are strictly going to be based upon what they put in their application based on the information that they gathered by doing the, uh, the, career, the training program research. 
some of the things that you may want to note, the caseworker may want to note, how long did it take the person to get through the career inventory? How long did it take them to get through the application? That will be a little bit of an indication about whether or not they need help reading or whether they had to do it in Spanish. It will still probably be about three hours because um, a half an hour maybe for the videos because by the time you get everybody into the room, you get the videos started. We, we're calculating 30 minutes for that. We're calculating 5 to 25 minutes for the career interest survey. People will have problems getting logged in, all that kind of stuff. And then we're giving them, we're allowing about 30 minutes for the job review, the training program review. And then we're allowing 30 to 45 minutes for the application filling out. So that's two hours right there. And then it's about 45 minutes, 30, 30 to 45 minutes for the random assignment. So that's two and a half to three hours, depending on how many caseworkers you have working. So Lori, does that answer your question? All right. OK. What else do we need to discuss? Um, it, Twyla, in some areas, it is um, 30 to 45 minutes for the random assignment. It could take as long as an hour. Depends on how much you have to talk about with the person about the programs that they have available to them. Um, Joseph, you said, I have one, and that is me. So how does that work when six people show and they all complete the process? Um, that's when you may have to take them one at a time. It's when you may need to um, perhaps, say, take a break. Um, come back in 45 minutes. Uh, this is one of the things that we have to work out. Some of the offices have more than one person, so it makes it a little bit easier. Um, Renee, that's um, just like I just said. It's You may want to then schedule them maybe for the next day or later in the afternoon. You can still schedule them, but the the process was done to help not have to reschedule people so that we don't lose them on not showing up on the second appointment. So if you have the ability to cross-train somebody, bring them in just for the random assignment portion of this to help you out with the flow, um, it will be better. We're looking at the fact that in many cases what was happening, we were losing the people between the initial intake appointment and the random assignment. They weren't showing back up. Okay, Lori says, that has been a big problem for us, them not showing up for the random assignment. Right. Uh, Joseph said, unfortunately, we go off-site from, from, from my office, and I am the one that does everything. Don't know any other way we will be able to do it until I speak with my admin. All right. Um, when does this go effective again? We're hoping to have it happen Wednesday, Chris, Region 1, um, as long as everything works out properly on the programming side. What's the big problem? OK. OK, OK. How about if I call you offline? Do we have any other con concerns or questions? Yeah, OK, and then last but not least, before, while well, we're waiting for people to type, 
one of the things that we did was we removed the customer name from any automatically generated Illinois WorkNet messages and emails to help with the being able to keep the keep the uh, pr information private. So that will, if you're communicating with us, we still need to have you use either the WorkNet ID or a DHS number and just tell us what it is. Um, I had a conversation with Leslie from Region 4 yesterday. Once we were on the phone, we could use the person's name, but in the email correspondence, we needed to use just the IDs. All right. Mara's still typing. I don't know if she's typing a question or not. Randolph's orientation is in St. Clair, and then we have brought them back into Randolph, oh, to the DHS office for the follow-up meeting. We will get together and discuss how to proceed. Our CBO is in St. Clair as well. Okay. Yes, this will take a little bit of planning on your part, and but we were so very concerned that we were losing the people between the time that they did the application and the time that they do the follow-up appointment. Um, and I know this is bad to say, but sometimes sitting in the office and waiting for you is not the worst thing in the world. And if you can get the random assignment process down to 30 minutes, if they're making good choices on their program selection, doing the research, people will finish at different times no matter what just because of their reading speed and their ability to navigate the system. So the people may, um, the people may kind of track out on their own. And just like I know that somebody has said in the past, we're building this plane as we're flying. So, and Mara just said, work in progress. We have to adjust as we go along. All right, it's 1035. If I don't see any other questions typing, um, we're going to end the recording. Thank you very much for joining us today. I hope this is good news for most of you. Um, and if you do have any questions along the way or if you have any other concerns, um, just send them to epic at IllinoisWorkNet.com and we will get the answers for you. And Chris, I'll call you as soon as we uh, close up the webinar. Have a great rest of your day.